gonna do a quick Whole Foods haul. We're trying to eat through all the food that we have in the house, so we're not buying a lot of groceries this week, but we got more of this cereal. This is really good if you slice up a banana on it. Um, some coconut milk, some black beans. Summer uses these for burrito bowls. She just puts beans, rice, corn, you know, some vegetables in there and stuff, guacamole, salsa. I got this drink. It's like a cranberry juice drink with other stuff in there, but it's you know, like natural stuff, so it's healthier than a normal drink like this. And I got this made to order sandwich. It has turkey cheddar, mixed veggies, cucumber, avocado, black olives, jalapeno, and oil and balsamic vinegar on a French roll. I'm pretty starving. Oh, and some sprouts. So I'm excited to eat this. That's my lunch. Jimmy, how was church? Oh, wait, you weren't in church today. <laughs> How was church, Pastor Matt? It was the best church I've been to today. Yeah. It was great. It was the best I've been to. What was it about? It was also the worst, I guess, by definition, <laughs> but it was John 1, 1 to 5. It was about the pre-existence, the deity of Christ. So it uh, brought us through those awesome, the prologue of John. So really great section and uh, a lot of theology. So did John... you, okay, here's the question, Summer, okay. since you're on camera. Why well, was gone for half of it? Remember? Oh yeah, but you yeah. still learn stuff. What what one new thing did you learn? Okay, so what I really got out of this today, your your camera is like doing a weird focusing thing. I don't Maybe understand. It's the light Maybe it's here. me. Um, I really thought that what you were saying was Jesus is God. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Well, okay. So there's two. There's here's here's a cool thing, right? There's two things that John 1, 1 to 5 addresses that are mistakes that I think are good. So it declares the full deity of Christ, uh -huh. but it also declares the Trinity. Both are, are totally embedded in, in, I call it like a section that's like a pregnant section. So you have the divinity of Christ fully expressed. So he's not a God, he's God, very God of very God, um, pre-existent. The, John 1 is... You know, instead of, you know, in the beginning was a word, in the beginning the word was, the word was with God, and God was the word. And so that language of the pre-existence of Christ, and then in verse 2, you have the separation, where you have he was in the beginning with God. So you have God and Christ being of the same essence, and now you have the separation in verse 2, which is Trinitarianism. And so the two big heresies we have, one is that Jesus is not God. Well, John addresses that he is God. And the second one is kind of um, polytheism, where they'll say, well, Jesus is God, but there's multiple ones. And he's like, no, no, but there's one God. He's the same. And so John 1 has to deal with this. The one, the only. Yeah, the one God and three persons is all embedded in this. It's a really neat passage, just pregnant with meaning um, and just really fun. One thing I thought, because I was telling you after church, is like it's, you can read through the beginning of John really quickly. Like, oh, this yeah. is just a quick introduction. Let's get to like the stories and mm -hmm. stuff. I had no idea. I thought it was really cool how much was in just that first, yeah. those first few verses. Yeah, if anyone, that, I mean, like when you look at the beginnings of all the gospels, you can see right away what each gospel writer is getting at. You know, mm -hmm. like Matthew wants to show Jesus is, you know, the son of Abraham, son of David in the same line. Mark shows that he comes on the scene all of a sudden. So he starts with John the Baptist, Luke, shows he's historical and that he, uh, you know, goes back to the nar birth narrative and shows he's the, the second Adam. But then with John, he just gets away from all the historicity and jumps into the theology of it. And he uses the term logos to describe Christ, which shows that he's waiting what he's saying with so much meaning. Mm -hmm. And it causes you to slow down and start to realize, wow, he's, he's saying these huge things that Jesus is the... You know, when you think of God outside of time, he doesn't do one thing or another. He's everything all at once in his thoughts. And that, man, that, that whole thing put together is Christ. You know, and then brings in the light and the darkness. And that there's no, they're not opposites. The darkness is the absence of light. And it brings all of that in and addresses all these, these things right away in the biggest way possible, which is why it's called the prologue. And uh, what an understated term. But man, one of my favorite sections of scripture. But if you, as you know, when you're there, it mm -hmm. kind of makes your mind melt a little bit. Yeah. Another part I liked was... Um, the Jehovah's Witness thing when you were saying yeah. how they use part of that, but then like just a few verses later, 
it like kind of blows their whole thing out of the water. It's a, that's a neat section because when you look at it, it's an earnest question um, where they misuse the Greek and they say that Jesus is a God with a little G. And they do that because they say there's no article before the word theos in, in the first verse. And so rather than argue with them and say, that's not a true Greek because most people don't know Greek. Yeah. Um, but you could say, well, wow, that's interesting. But you can say that in verse six, same paragraph in verse six, it says there's a man sent from God. And they translate it big G. But when you look, there's no article. So if they were to stick with their same rule, they'd have to say a God. And so all that does is it shows them that they're being disingenuous when they're saying that in the first one. And yeah. it's an easy way without being super offensive to have them like maybe to look at their... examine it. Yeah, yeah. So. That was really interesting. Can you have some good stuff to listen to? Man, what a I know. And I this week. That's good. <laughs> and the whole time he was talking about it, I'm like, man, Jimmy would love this. Because he was talking about like time, which I know you're like, super into that I love that talking whole. about time. Time and Time's dimensions and physics. Yeah. Physics and metaphysics. Yep. We got it. He, was, it. he was talking about all of that. I was like, oh, Jimmy. Oh, I'm going to watch it for sure. And so should all of you. But I was in there teaching Sunday school, so I, I, I didn't see it. I was. I just I, made a kiss quiet for the video. Yeah. And Becky, I sat with <laughs> Becky. I was at church, but I got a stomach ache halfway through and had to um, leave church for a little bit. So anyway, thanks, Matt. Yeah, I'm that was a good church chat. Time. You did really exciting. well. I was, I was really I'm well. nervous actually being in the church chat. <laughs> it's exciting. People will be very excited straight from the horse's yeah. mouth. All right, thanks. All right, it's Sunday night and we are on a date. Um, I think this is our first date in three months. When was the last time we went on a date? It's been a long time. It was before we got the girls, right? Uh, probably. I don't think we've had anybody come watch the girls for us. I'm gonna try to oh kiss wait, you. we went to the play with Joe and Greg. Was that when we had the girls? I feel like we had the girls then. If yes, we I think just... it was new or something. No, know. wait, when we went to the play, it was before. Cause remember we were talking outside by the car about what we were, how we were only taking in one child. I don't think we had the girls yet. Hmm. Anyway. It's been a long time because we can't even remember the last time we were out. So Becky and Matt actually told us we're coming over on Sunday night and you two are going on a date. So Jimmy got his outfit. <laughs> I, was, I was going. He was wearing something different today. Was, I was. I'm shiny. And I was actually going to bottle. dress up even more than this summer. I was going to wear a tie. But I'm just wearing this top and then my new jeans. If you guys saw my clothing haul, um, those are my new jeans from Plato's Closet. The Armani ones, but they were only $30. So, so anyway. Anyway, yeah, I was going to dress up fully, like wear a tie and everything, but then I decided to wear my... Sailor outfit. My, uh, my sailing outfit, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go to this little area of San Diego called Encinitas. We love that area, like Solana Beach, Encinitas. If we buy a house, that's one of the areas we love to buy. Um, we're just going to go walk around, like their little downtown area, and see if there's any good music playing. It'd be um, nice to find like a cool reggae band playing in a little cafe. Or like cafe. a swing band. Or a swing band. Or ska. Just kidding. Whoa, Scott. Um, and yes. I went, we stopped at Plato's Plaza really quick. Because I still super. had a little bit more money left um, in my shopping budget. And I didn't try things on, so I don't know how things are going to work out. But I got, a, got a few cute things. And I had 20% off. It was like a score. Yeah, maybe I'll haul it later. Because I don't want to do another video hauling clothes after the last one. So I'll just, I'll just include it. Saldana fam you. But you had fun there. You almost got an Armani sweater. Yeah, but... Uh, it was $20. Armani, yeah, I know. I mean, it was a good price. Great condition. The neck was a little bit wide. Was it stretched out or was it just wide? I think it was made like that. Yeah. But the thing is, and it still had the tags on Brand it. Brand new. Like, yeah, it couldn't rules. have been stretched out. But, um... I'm glad I didn't get it because... It's not on my list of items that I want to get, so there's Sorry. no reason for me to get it. You know, I, I don't like to. By that rule. I like to know exactly what I'm looking for before I go into a store. Otherwise, and I, I hate that. 
I have to buy something and I just realistically don't yeah. want to wear it. I, and I was telling him, I'm like, I hate looking for something specific because whenever I need something, like I'm looking for those sweatpants and I can't find them. And that would be so frustrating to only go shopping for one thing and then not have the luck of finding it. So for me, I love, it's like a, a hunt. Like I, it's a treasure hunt. Like I don't know what treasures are waiting for me something great might just pop up and that's exciting but I think I've gotten to a place in my style now where I know um, what I'm gonna wear realistically I don't just buy things because it's trendy or the latest fad um, I buy things that I know I'll probably wear for a long time so a lot of my stuff I've had for a few years now and I still wear it and I think it's still cool it's fun having live music. And then we're gonna go get my hair done. Oh, your bangs are looking mighty cute right now. Do you still love them? Do you want them forever? Me too. Let me see your new stuffed animal. It's not new. Well, it's new. You've only had it a week. What's his name or her name? Tedos. Where'd you get it? Um. You. Mm -hmm. Do you love Tattles more than Giraffe? Um, I don't know. Do you love them the same? Yeah. Tattles is so cute. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick Plato's Closet haul because on my date with Jimmy, we stopped at Plato's Closet just for, I don't know, probably a half an hour. I didn't try anything on until I got home, but everything fit. So I thought I would just show you what I got. I got this long maxi skirt, it's kind of a tie-dye print, and that was $8. And then I got this one, it's a little more flowy, that one's like a little more straight. Um, it has this elastic band, and this one was $10. Then I got this tank top here, it's like flowy, and the back is actually super cute I'll show you that was six dollars this tank top do you see how it like opens and it's like this little ruffle so this will be cute in the summer with like a tank top underneath and then I got this tank top it has like this metal stuff right here this was three dollars and I'll show you the back this one has kind of an open back as well and then the last shirt, I think, was like, I took the tag off. I think this was like $5. It's just a Hollister loose baggy t-shirt. And that is everything from Plato's Closet. And I forgot these two sweatshirts. My most favorite Roxy sweatshirt from TG Maxx got ruined in the washing machine. And so I've been on the hunt, but TG Maxx didn't have more. But that's okay because Plato's Closet did. So I got the two that they had. And it's super soft and really light, which I like. And this one's plain on the back and it just has the pocket, little slits. I love the big wide sleeves. And I think that these are really cute too. And then this dark gray one. It's the same brand, Roxy, with the pocket in the front. Same sleeves, a little bit different here. And then the back has this print. So now I can resume 
my normal gray sweatshirt wearing during the week. Okay, so I thought I would show you what came in the beauty boxes this last month. So this one is BoxyCharm. This is my favorite one. I think it's $25, but you get all full-size products, and I love everything. So this month, this is everything that came, and it tells you how much each thing is. So you can see you are definitely getting your money's worth. So the first thing you get here is this brow brush and this brow trio so you can do your brows then you have the Lauren B Beauty this is a beautiful beautiful color I love that it's in Sunset Boulevard and you get this bronzer by model company and then this is the only thing where I'm like I don't know what to do with this because I don't wear purple lipstick I mean that's like a legit purple lipstick um so I'm kind of wishing I had got a different color, but I don't know. So anyway, that's the only thing I didn't love in this. And like I said, you can see here what each thing is and how much each thing costs. For Beauty Box 5, this is $11 a month. You get maybe one full-size product. Usually the rest are all like sample size. Um, the first thing here is the Rosemary Mint hand soap. These are kind of cool. These are little mini tweezers. So I'll probably keep those in my purse. Um, this is a Dermalogica Active Moist. I'll show you the card to tell you what they're all about. Um, this is, let's see here. Let's just look at the card right now. Okay. So that is a blush highlighter stick, but it's kind of a brown color. I don't know if to play with that. And then you get a brush by Coastal Scents. So the brush is $1.95 to $2.50. Dermalogica full size is $60. The blush highlighter stick $5.99. The luxury hand soap is $4.99. And the mini tweezers are $4.99. So I don't know. This isn't really my favorite. But the tweezers are fun. And then the last thing is my Ipsy. This is $10 a month. You get a beauty bag filled with some goodies. Um, they don't have a card to tell you about the products, but this is Jessie's Girl. It's, let's see here. This is a pure pigment eye dust, so eyeshadow. Um, it's pretty. And this, let's see. Okay, this is a taupe eyebrow color. So that's for your eyebrows. Um, this is True Organic Pharmacy. I actually have the book. My friend got me a book um, all about their products and all about like healthy beauty. And I really love it. So I'm excited to try this. It's a face cream. This is Organic pharmaceuticals style me roots and end hair oil and then finally is the urban decay high color lip gloss and this is actually a lip liner I think let me see oh I guess the lip glosses are right there those little sample ones um, let me open this up so this is not a lip liner I think this is a primer so you prep your lips with this glide on pencil and it grabs onto color to help it last and fills in lines. Sorry, my hands are so shaky. Um, prevents feathering and corrects mistakes. So that's kind of fun. I'll have to bring that to Gin Beauty this weekend and, and try it out. And that's everything that came in my beauty boxes. All laid out and ready to be put away. Hey guys, so it's Friday morning and I'm wrapping up this week's fam cam. It's super short this week, I know but it's because I'm leaving in just a few hours to go pick up Sam and Melissa from the airport and we are driving up to LA for Gen Beauty. And so I'm going to do all my editing and uploading this morning and I will include all the Gen Beauty stuff in next week's fam cam. I also just wanted to take a second to thank you guys so much for your sweet encouragement and support on our vlogs last weekend. I was so nervous to post the one of me just by myself. Um, I just wasn't sure what the response would be. I was pretty certain I might lose a bunch of subscribers, um, but I knew I just needed to do that, that it was the right thing to do. So I just wanted to thank you guys for 
being so amazing and so encouraging. And I'm just so thankful for this community and for you guys. So anyway, all right, you guys, I hope you're having a great week and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Why are you making that noise? Because I'm crying. Huh? So I can watch it. Oh, she wants to watch a movie. All right. I got some editing and packing to do. See you guys later. In today's video, I am going to be sharing with you my summer essentials, the products that I think you guys need to have, the products that I make sure I have, 